Hi, hello, my name is Harry Potter and this is Rad Art, a show where I pick someone out of pop culture who I think is creepy, tell you why I think they're creepy, and then I draw them and I try a different technique every single time. This time I didn't. Well rather I did because I'm Harry Potter and I haven't drawn anything. I'm using pencil and a Copic marker and yes technically Beth has used pencil and Copic marker before but Harry Potter has not, so it's fine. And who is Harry Potter drawing? drawing for this week's rad art well none other than his favorite storyteller tim burton i tried to draw in a very tim burton like style and let's see how it turned out shall we giddy on that's not what they say Tim Burton is the artist, the filmmaker, the writer that created the look of nerdy gothic 90s culture. He's an artsy box office sensation and I like him because he's an illustrator turned director in proof that no matter how weird the inside of your brain is, you're not the only one and because of that people will love what you make. Born in 1958 in the animation capital of America, Burbank, California, Timothy Walter Burton grew up making short films in his backyard, emulating the monster movies he loved by using crude stop-motion animation techniques to do it, techniques that he would further develop into his adulthood. Similarly, in my adulthood, I've gotten really good at chasing off Dementors with my bomb stag Patronus, because that's what I did in my backyard. Me, Harry Potter. Tim studied animation at the prestigious California Institute of the Arts and upon graduation landed a position with Disney Animation. A dream job for most, but like a vegan at a barbecue in Texas, it wasn't a good fit. He worked on Fox and the Hound, storyboarding and animating for the film. And you know his style, Fox and the Hound is not it. That being said, he did have free reign to make anything he wanted at the studio and he took full advantage of that creative freedom and made two shorts, Vincent and Frankenweenie. They were dark and creepy, laying the groundwork for bigger projects to come. However, Disney fired him for making movies that were too scary for kids. It's nice to not have that problem here at Snarled. We're encouraged to scare kids every day. After Disney, he directed a run of very successful films. Pee-wee's Big Adventure, Beetlejuice, Batman, Edward Scissorhands, and Batman Returns. He earned a reputation as an unconventional filmmaker, and the stop-motion film he wrote and produced, The Nightmare Before Christmas, was adored by outcasts and popular kids alike, reinvigorating stop-motion animation as a medium. Cabin Boy, Ed Wood, James and the Giant Peach, Mars Attacks, Sleepy Hollow, Planet of the Apes, Big Fish, Corpse Bride, Sweeney Todd, Alice in Wonderland? It's said that Tim Burton wears pinstripe socks to every premiere, that he believes pinstripes are good luck, and maybe the rest of us creatively minded people should adapt that habit, because Burton's catalogue of films are massively successful and widely adored by both mainstream and cult audiences, and wizard audiences. Oh. His sketches and storyboards have appeared in traveling exhibitions in the MoMA and Los Angeles Museum of Art, and his work has been nominated for awards at the Academy Awards, the Golden Globes, and the BAFTA, taking home a win in Best Musical or Comedy for Sweeney Todd. Check it out, it's a hilarious romp in the park, almost as funny as The Martian. <laughs> He's a dark fantasy wizard, which should make me, Harry Potter, uncomfortable. But it doesn't, because Voldemort is dead and I've proven that darkness is nothing to be afraid of. Happy Halloween! Subscribe to Snod if you haven't already. If you like this video, like it, and then down in the comments, tell me how my accent is. I know it's very, very good. Also in the comments, tell me who you want me to draw for the next Red Art, and maybe I'll magically appear to do so. Uh.